Our topic today is calls from a killer, the unsolved murder of Dorothy Jane Scott. Bring a cup of tea or your favorite drink and let's get started. Dorothy Jane Scott is a mother who lives with her young son, who is four years old in California, USA, and she works as a secretary for a commercial company. All her friends describe her as religiously committed in calm, and she was morally committed, does not drink alcohol, loves to stay in her home, and her life remained quiet until she received a call of mystery from the unknown. The unknown man has been telling Dorothy that he loves her dearly and has been threatening her with murder and kidnapping. But what terrified her most about the unknown man was that he was telling her very special things, as if he lived with her and watched all the details of her life. In one of the calls, he told her what to wear, and in one of the times he put wilted flowers on her car and told her that he had put a gift for her. So she told her mother that the voice of the unknown man was familiar. She said she had heard it before, but she didn't remember. With the passage of time, the calls became very scary, and at one point the man told her that he would cut her into parts, and she began to feel danger to her life, and terror began to enter her heart, and she decided to receive some karate and self-defense arts. On May 28, 1980, a colleague of hers at work was bitten by a poisonous spider, so she decided to take him to the hospital immediately. Another colleague accompanied her, and on the way she stopped at her house to check on her son and replaced her black scarf with a red one. In the hospital, the doctors treated her colleague, and the doctors allowed him to leave at 11 in the evening. And she asked him to stop for a while to get her car from the hospital parking lot, and suddenly they found the car heading towards them at a crazy speed, and they could not see who was inside because of the lights, and the car passed without stopping. The two men were surprised and said that something must have happened to her son, and when they returned home, they called to check on her, but she did not return home. The family informed the police, and after searching, the policemen found the car burnt, and there was no sign of it, and there were no signs that the car had been in an accident. After a week of disappearance, her mother received a call from the unknown man, and he says to her, are you close to Dorothy? Then he tells her I got it and hangs up. And this continued for four years, and on June 12, 1980, the local newspapers published the news of the girl's disappearance. And on the same day, the unknown man appeared and told them that he had killed her and said that she was the love of my life, but I found her cheating on me with another. The unknown caller told them about the clothes she was wearing on the day of the disappearance, and that he was watching her and said they told them that she had made a call to him at the hospital, but her co-workers denied it because they were accompanying her all the time. The police monitored the phone, but the problem was that the unknown caller was not talking long. On August 6, 1986, construction workers on Santa Ana Canyon Road discovered some charred human bones. After dental records, the police suggested that it belonged to Dorothy, and the clock was 12 and a half, that is, an hour and a half after her disappearance. The killer remained unknown, and nothing was known about the cause of death, nor about the anonymous calls. Some real photos of the victim. In 1994, on Dorothy's birthday, her father, Jacob Scott, passed away. Vera Scott passed away in 2002, 22 years after her daughter's abduction. They never discovered what happened to Dorothy or who was responsible. The case remains unsolved. Those acquainted with the pair said he was obsessed with Dorothy. Sean claims law enforcement had their eye on this guy but never had enough evidence to arrest or charge him. The alleged suspect died in 2014. The end thanks for watching. Don't forget subscribe.